What's up, what's up, yo? This is Views Podcast. Uh, Charlie, it's been a while. It's been a while, guys. It's been a while. Yeah. Welcome to an exciting episode. Another exciting one. My name is Derek. My name is Jay. And uh, today, we, we are bringing you something exciting. Uh, is it exciting? It is exciting. I, I'm particularly, you know... All for it. Yeah. Okay. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. But uh, in case you were wondering, this this podcast is brought to you by the Praetorium. <laughs> the Praetorium, <laughs> the perfect venue for your perfect occasion. Um, call them on 244 Oh, shit. We... You forgot the slogan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Charlie, what did you do, sir? Everything. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> we are a bit rusty. <laughs> we are a bit rusty. It's been, it's been yeah, a yeah, but we get hang of it. Yeah, yeah. So I'll call them on 0244926622. Um, all your events needs weddings, Jeffrey's outdoor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, Town you don't know the inside, but okay. Yeah. Every, everything that you. Any events, just call them on 0244926622 and they will hook you up. The Praetorium, the perfect venue for your perfect occasion. Yeah, also, uh, this is brought to you by Matcon, yeah. which is uh, the first speed dating event in GH. It's our best. Yes, I mean, I've, I've said this w- one too many times that it's coming to you, it's coming to you, but it's actually here. Yeah. 13th yeah. December, Friday the 13th. Should we call it a year of return, Matcon? Look, it is. It is, huh? Because right now, everyone is branding everything year of return. So. You know what I like about this? Uh, the <coughs> What were you doing? Yeah. Um, the date... The date, the speed date in here. No, the the date. Oh, Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th, yeah. man. So we are going to have um, Freddy Krueger there. <laughs> We're going to have Jason. Chucky. Chucky. Everyone's going to be there. Everybody's going to be there because <laughs> it's going to be Friday the 13th of December. Yeah. Um, if you want to know where the location is, kindly go on Eventbrite. I mean, we can tell you, but... You still have to go. Yeah, go there and then go go sign up. And uh, like we said, it's by privilege, man. Doesn't mean you're gonna be there so, automatically yeah, when you when you sign up. And yeah. honestly, it's uh, it's it's popping off. So, if you're listening to this right now and you hear Matcon, you guys just need to jump on Eventbrite and just go sign up because it's going to be something else. Yes, because uh, this this December one is going to be a uh, big. Yeah. Uh, Matcon, the perfect. Yo, love, <laughs> drink, drink, switch. and then switch. Yeah, and and I'm 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 sure if you're on social media, you've seen you've seen the new advert. It's yeah, the, the new uh, animation going around. It's, it's yeah, it's actually really good. Is anybody a new joke? We don't play. Yeah, man, Charlie. Again, um, now if if you've been an ardent listener of Views Podcast, uh, we interviewed a gentleman called Kagami. Shiaka Kagami. Shiaka Kagami. Yeah. Um, he came to premiere uh, his movie or documentary yeah. um, during the Charlie Water time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I know a lot of people listen to it and they hate us that uh, where can they find the movie? But because of you know legal issues and ownership, um, you know it's not out there for people to see. But now it's available and it's going to be available one time and one time only. So please um, pay attention to what I'm about to say. He is again um, screening it at Alliance Francais. At Alliance Francais on Wednesday, 27th November, yeah. 2019, 6 p.m. Alliance Francais, Wednesday, 27th November, 2019. That's don't like miss less it. Less than a week from. Today. Yeah, that's a week from now. So don't yeah. miss it. Um, go and go see Bounty. Um, an amazing documentary or movie. I mean, I thought it was a movie, man. I thought I was watching Unstoppable. It was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that thing was good. Yeah, it was good. It's, it goes, it, it goes is good. great. And um, it had some Ghanaian actors in there. Yeah. Um, were they actors since it was a documentary? Well, it was, yeah. Yes. It, was, it was more of a documentary. So I guess they were just being themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's great. I mean, yo, man. Photography, cinematography, whatever. Yo, oh, is, the angles were good, the, <laughs> basically. The, the experts, <laughs> go watch it, Charlie. Knock yourself out, but it's amazing. Go check it out. Support, you know, the African dream. He's trying to tell a story. Um, go support it. Um, now, let's get right to business, bro. Mm, all right. Charlie, so um, 
this week or last week. I mean, they launched it about two weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, and when we say they, we are not talking about DJ Khaled's day. <laughs> this day is positive, not negative. <laughs> uh, we are talking about CTFM. Yeah. Um, and 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 this ties in. You see, when we're doing the the interview with uh, Bapioko, yeah, who works as uh, who works at City FM. FM. The, ama- the amazing Apioko. Uh, the queen. The queen. The matriarch. Ooh. Apioko. Yes. Yes. Uh, when we're interviewing her, I think I asked her a question about content and how they can, you know, champion the narrative of 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 Ghanaian and whatever, you know, trying to sanitize the content in the in the system. And I think um, they've done it again. Mm. You know, from time to time, they always bring about some initiatives and then they they push their agenda so hard. And like they say, radio get results. They yeah. actually do get results. Yeah. We saw the first one with um, Galamse. Mm-hmm. They made so much noise about it. We actually we actually saw the results. Yeah. Um, and then uh, unfortunately, my guy may his soul rest in peace, you know, had to go through that, but um, he died for a good cause. So, yo, Major Mahama, my guy, man. <laughs> okay. May yeah. also rest in peace, bro. Shut up. Yeah. Um, and then they started one recently called War Against Indiscipline. Okay. Where they are on the streets, you know, trying to get people to to drive. Pepe, pepe. <laughs> <laughs> follow the rules. Yeah, follow the rules. Rules which never exist. But anyway, yeah, follow it the rules. It does. Charlie, if Koti Bob, you go not see you ba- bicycle self gets speed limit. There you go, not see bicycle self gets speed limit. He has it. Every time Koti go Bob, you. Yeah. They start to quote laws then. Like, yeah. I mean, they're like, not like, No, but they, they're not. Does it exist? Yeah, it does. It does. You see, there's the thing is we don't know, or we probably don't know. Yeah, by excuse, excuse what do they call that in self? Uh, ignorance. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. Yeah, but then maybe they could be lying to you. But then since you also don't know what the actual yeah, thing well, is. Well, you're bad. That one, I know <laughs> everybody <laughs> fault. But Mama P always tell me this thing. Say, everybody figures a law no day can to your body go bab you. Mm. That when you go not say law day. So if you, in all your dealings, try to do the right thing. Yeah. Uh, yo, shout out to Pop, man. <laughs> that would answer they tell me where I always take it. But, um, so they did a war against indiscipline. And now they bought a, about another, a whole new initiative, which um, is amazing mm. by all standards. Um, because, you know, in Ghana, we've been complaining. We've been trying to hold people responsible or accountable be it the government, be it the 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 agencies, be it individuals, be it be Ghanaians, you know, like ourselves, you and I, you yeah. know, we always go like ah but Ghana people too they do it be them with and they make that you know, you know. But mm-hmm. um, I, I think there comes a time where we have to take charge and try and spin some of the narrative so that, you know, it helps us because um the the government of the day will only do what the people want anyways. Yeah. You know, because politically that is what they want to, you know, be in power. So But to an extent, I mean the government can only go as far as they can go. But Yeah, but if if, if that's what the people are calling for, yeah. that is what they are going to do because that is what they will seem to be the right thing to do to keep them in power. Yeah. And and I especially applaud CTFM for this new initiative of uh, Operation Feed Yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, and making so much noise about it. And um, I think already the, minist- the Minister of Agric, you know, has, you know, put in a word and they are actually, you know, making moves to make it happen and, and make it as big as possible and widespread as possible to you know, achieve it. Yeah. And you know, holistically. And um I'm happy about that. And I think C T F M deserves an applaud. Charlie give it <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean Operation Feed yourself is nothing new though. Yeah. It's nothing new. Who be that nigga self? Um there was a head of state who brought about it. I think yo man, my history Charlie. But you, you, you actually mentioned... <laughs> yeah, 
I don't. Yo, is it Kutu a champion? I think it's Kutu a champion. Kutu a champion brought about to preach and feed yourself. Ig- Apparently, it's Ignatius Kutu a champion. But that old in time, then they're not Ignatius. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, he brought about it, and so it's, it's something that we've done before, yeah. which helped us. But I think it was done, uh, you know, like on a on, on a, a on a on a lower scale. Oh, okay. But what CTFM is trying to champion, it will start from, you know, something small. But yeah. I think the bigger picture is to make it really big. But you know, you know, CTFM, they don't do small things. Something like that, going hard. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And um, is the impact that looking for? And that's exactly what they do. And 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 the, and and the good thing about this is, I was on Twitter yesterday, and there was a hashtag running, not not the trendy one, but Ghana rice was trending. Yes. Nice. Okay. Ghana rice was trending. Yeah. And then um, I so I thought it was going to be CTFM, but it was Joy FM. Oh okay, yeah. So that Someone means riding on the wave already. <laughs> that means um, you know the other major networks or radio stations are also joining in because yeah. they all realize, look, this is something good. You know, we should all you know chip in our two cents and make it a reality. Yeah, because it has so many benefits. That's unity, man. It has so benef- so many benefits and it has challenges. <laughs> I'd like to talk about the challenges first, bro. Oh, so soon. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, man. You see, you told me a story. Yeah. About another product. Okay. But before, before, before we go on, uh, you dropped Ghana rice before. Yo, I don't know if the one then when we were kids <laughs> we used to eat, um, you know, for a mutu, two Jimmy one. Yeah, the two Jimmy. That is that Ghanaian rice. You know yeah, I mean, if that is, then yes, I have. But <laughs> they just cook for you, chop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but growing know, up, yeah. no, I, I have, I haven't spent a CD on buying Ghana rice mm. before. But I can tell you for a fact, me and my household, this year, next year, and forever, we are doing Ghana rice. Wow, well, big ups, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that is something we have decided. Nice, it's, okay. it's, it's happening. Like yeah. no going back on that. But I was, I was listening to the radio today. Yeah. And yeah. Apparently, people were saying that. Ghana rice, the go plus, kotomri, then hmm. eggs, garden eggs to you, like, Yo, like man. the low cultures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, be chicken stew that, nah. Yeah, the yeah. go plus are low cultures. Mm. Apparently, it's, it's, it's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That combination is the best. Yo, you see, you talk so <laughs> it's, it's like we are going away from, you know, everything we grew up on. Yeah. You know, and those times, that they see someone with me, they chop rice plus cook. Who crossed you? Well, they bust your mind. You, you, you <laughs> know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And that was normal in my house. <laughs> it was normal in your house. Rice and kutum. O- 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 you. Would it be normal? You oh, see? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was strange to me. But she was, always, joke. she was always eating that. And I, I think if people are talking like this, you know, we are talking about the garden x to you yeah. are talking about the contumely these are local like yeah we did we we did chop that yeah and and it it, it has this chain reaction mm-hmm. you know yeah. so if people start talking about it go plus your garden next and whatnot where would they buy garden next for you know with the market you know where they grow up you know mm-hmm. so and now people start going in for everything local because that's what it goes with. Yeah. So it means that we they patronize more local shit. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then it means say, you know we they create more jobs. Cascading effect. I, you know what I'm saying? And Cascade. and I think that is the ultimate goal for all this thing because one time I heard somebody say that every dollar we spend importing something into Ghana is a job denied a mm. Ghanaian. That's deep. No shit, right? That is deep. Yeah. Every dollar we spend importing something into Ghana is a job denied a Ghanaian. That's true. And a job true. created for someone else. For somebody else out there. Yeah. And we've been doing that to ourselves for years. Yeah. Finally. And that's why I'm saying, Charlie, look, I applaud City CTFM CTFM using yeah. their platform because they are, they, are, they are a big deal. Yeah. You know? And they are using their platform to push this agenda. 
But you, the challenges I was talking about, mm. you see, I was saying you were telling a story where another product where, you know, it can be done easily. Mm. I, I won't go into the details, but it can be done easily, but because p- some people already exist in the industry and they do it a certain way to make them money, they are not yeah. going to allow it. Oh, okay. Unless they are involved, they're not going to allow it. And yeah. you know, um, all these industries have some sort of cartels. Mm. Okay. Um, believe it or not, yo, it's a million dollar industry. And Ghana, it, it, right? it exists. Exactly. And it exi- it's if, there. if you're trying to change this, people are not going to be happy. And they are very powerful people mm-hmm. involved in this. In high places, so you can imagine. Yeah, so... Once they talk, everything happens. To me, um, I mean, that's not the only challenge. We are, we are, we are also looking at um, the taste and preference of the people, yeah. you know, um, the mentality of the people about the product. Uh, quite a few of them, but um, the cartels, I think, we, I mean, if CTFM being a, a media, being media can push this agenda, I'm sure they can. They can help with changing the mentality and the taste and preference and blah blah blah. They can they can it will take a bit of I time, mean, but they can't. But, honest, in but the cartels I think is the issue. Yeah, but you see, like you said, way earlier in the whole in the whole conversation, but mm. that it comes down to the Ghanaian people. Mm. It comes down to us, how we we have been sensitized to, you know, accept Ghanaian rice or whatever it is. Or locally, you know. Locally produced produce rice. Yeah. So if we think or if we believe that this is this is what works for us, this goes well with our <coughs> our contemporary and all our garden next to you, then obviously we we'll go for it. I mean, at the end of the day, is is the price that counts for everything. Yeah, but you see, yeah, price is cool, but we are also looking at quality. Yeah, but like I said, yeah, and like we, I, I said, I, I, like I, I think said, food grown here is 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 much more quality. Yes, like I said. I mean, someone actually came out and said, yo, listen, I tried this whole jasmine rice and all these perfume rice mm. with kontumri, mm. but it didn't go as well as <laughs> the locally the, made the rice. Be like, you grew for so, so corner like that. But we <laughs> never know. <laughs> <laughs> you grew for so corner like that, Charlie. You do it taste test where you say, yo, this is what works. Yeah, yeah. But you, you see, um, it's not just about Ghana rice, though. Mm-hmm. You know, we are looking about operation feed yourself. So anything that you can grow, yeah. You know, and then slowly, maybe we can move, we can upscale it, and then it becomes a big thing. Okay. Uh, oh, and I haven't told you this, yo. After I have my backyard garden, bro. Hey. Yeah, I've got corn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, See, yeah. Corn to grow out. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's that flower, you know. So okay. I see, you see the corn they come and so <laughs> Obviously, niggas no go still have it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you so go chop up. I go chop up. Why not go chop up? Okay. I mean, no. it's not in a big, you know, but I'll, I'll go chop up. But it, it means, it, it, what it means is, if I plant, they will yeah. grow and I can use them. Because I just, we just, you know, we, we throw some things there and if you go see the whole backyard, full of. You should say that we will eat. <laughs> nah, I know you What did you talk about, bro? <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, get, we get mango for house. Mm. But I've never seen anyone pluck that mango and eat it. It'll go waste. Hundred percent. The best is chop it. Oh, Charlie. But anyway, I mean, yeah, but 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 that is what they are trying to change. So if me, mm, I can grow maize yeah. or corn. Charlie, which one would they use? Would they speak Queen's language? Maize or corn? Corn, eh? yeah, corn. Yeah. So if. I if, I, if I give shout out to one uh, this uh, low key producer for here, low with the correct tweet, you said that <laughs> she says she don't like uh, spotlight. Spotlight. <laughs> so we will keep it at that low key producer. <laughs> okay. So she said be corn, you know, be maize. Yeah, but if 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 I feel grow and I never saw myself doing this because mm. I always come up with the excuse that I don't have the time, but yeah. The good thing is, like you said, maize or corn also grows well, so you just leave it and then it happens. And uh, the rains has also been good, so. But you just said that you don't see yourself growing things. Yeah. But this is a multi billion dollar industry. I know. And that is what I'm saying. You see, we are all being sensitized, small, small. Yeah. You know, to start thinking about 
the agricultural industry. Um, so I've done this little thing. Yeah. I mean, it's small, small steps. Yeah. Now so good, I yeah. see what other entails. I'm going to have a soon if niggas no steal. <laughs> and then, you know, then I'm say, oh, let me try something else. And yeah. then I start getting into it. I start getting involved with the whole, you know, paying attention to yeah. it and stuff. And then you realize excuses. that you actually spend maybe, say, 50% less uh, money on buying. Probably. Probably. I don't yeah. know. But um, what, what excites me is um, if I'm able to grow other, you know, stuff, yeah. that means I'm going to get things fresh. Sure. Yeah, I'm not going to you know go to the market. Even though they say it's fresh, nah, nah this I know is fresh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I grew it. <laughs> you know I was saying? there. I was there. You know, yeah. no baumiatos. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I did it. I know it's fresh. We d- you don't have to go to the mall and go and buy any imported you know vegetables yeah. and stuff like that. And, and so I'm excited about that. And but look, we vegetables we expire this day top. You do I expire the date, date up? Yeah, date up. Expire it, yes. It's, it's really? on the veg. Yes. Seriously? On the vegetables. I know see before. It did. I don't go to that section, so. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I, I have no idea. You go straight to the Indomie side. <laughs> no, nah, I don't eat Indomie too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, straight to the other side. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, talking about these cartels, yeah. Yeah. I think the issue here is the cartels are not going anywhere. Oh, no, they're here. They've established. They've established. Yeah. So I think I read a tweet on, um, obviously, on Twitter. <laughs> 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 I read a tweet, obviously, on Twitter. And, and then um, the guy said, not very, very much him, but uh, he said something about um, the, the, the key is not to say ban mm, okay. you know and the whole idea about pushing feed yourself is not to place embargoes or ban importation and anything yeah, like that. Yeah. So it's about trying to change the the taste and preference of Ghanaians. okay and y- you know that sort of thing yeah so the the cartels are not going to make it any easy because it will still be advertising and advertisement works look what does what city is doing with this, you know, advertisement talking about operation feed yourself, Ghana rice, yeah. and, you know, promoting all these locally made products and stuff like they are all advertisement and the sensitizing people. People are listening to it. People are, you know, buying into the concept. Yeah, the, these cartels also know that radio works, television works, and mm-hmm. they are also not going to just no, sit down and make up their game. Of course, True. so they are also going to advertise to make sure that things still the way it is because that's where they make their money from yeah so the key he as he tweeted that it's not to ban or to get these guys out of business but rather we should try and 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 flip them or change their business module okay. from importing you know foreign stuff and rather turn them into the the suppliers and distributors mm. of the local rice okay so they still get to call the shots. Mm-hmm. They still get to make their money. Yeah. But this time around, for a good cause. Mm-hmm. You, you, you get what I mean? So it, it will move from just supplying, because they have the capacity. Yeah. They have serious capacity, because uh, yearly we are importing about what, $400 million of <laughs> rice and shit. $400 million? Hell yeah. Yes. Truth. Yes, okay. so... I mean, they have the capacity to do that. So yeah. we are looking at not just supplying and distribution in Ghana, yeah. but, but outside as well. they should start looking, you know, outside. And um, the good thing is, CTFM is doing a fine job where they are bringing in people to explain how they mill the rice and stuff like that. Mm, okay. You know, other products, um, the packaging is now excellent. Yo, last I was eating this um, dry, f- dry fruits. Dry fruits, okay. Oh yeah, My, okay. I was eating some coconut one me. Yeah, it is pop for me. I actually get some mango one from right inside right now. Do you remember the brand? I just don't remember the brand. Uh, I, I don't want to say, but I don't. Th- I can't remember. Yeah, but but, but you know the the one I'm talking about, yeah. right? This yeah. was this was made in, in Ghana. Ghana. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It's, it's made by a Ghanaian, and it's really good. Very excellent. 
Should Excellent. So now the packaging is, is correct. Thanks to millennials <laughs> and the internet. The, 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 the packaging is correct. You know, at first, we used to do things anyhow. Yeah. Talk way. But now peop- I think people are beginning to understand that, you know, you need to compete we need to compete the with the outside yeah. world. Uh, not just price, but packaging, exactly. quality, you know, all those things. And I think now we are up there. We are, get, we are there. We we are there. We, we are, are up there. there. If 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 you don't know, you go talk to something. But yo, yeah. if some of the things I've seen out there, which are made in Ghana, and by Ghanaians, you know, so like low key, you know, this normal plantain chips we we fry and we sell, we eat. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. These things have been exported. That's right, right? Yeah, yeah. These things have been exported. Yeah. If you see the packaging. Mm. You would wonder. You would think twice. Like, where's this coming from? Yeah, yeah. But this is this is selling outside outside Ghana. Mm. And if we can do this for plantain chips, bro, you, you see, and um, you can change again. When when um, those times when you go to a really nice spot, yeah, and you bought a drink, say beer or whatever, they'll yeah. come serve you with uh, peanuts, yeah, or cashew and stuff like that. At first, it used to be imported. I remember. Mm-hmm. So those coated nuts and stuff like that, which were all imported. But now, I'm saying this because you mentioned the plantain chips. Yeah. Now, if you go to some of these major hotels we have in town, yeah. Alisa and the rest, um, they have Alisa. plantain chips from local local people. Yeah. And look, these experts come in, they are loving them. Oh, they love it. I'm telling you, bro. They love it. They love it. Uh, now, my crease... And yeah, people tell me I'm weird when I say this, but <laughs> yo, beer and popcorn. What? Yeah. That's <laughs> <the part. laughs> what? That's <laughs> part, man. What? Yeah. What? Sugar popcorn or salt popcorn? Salt. What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo. Yeah. And you, you, you see, so we popcorn. We get popcorn from corn. Yeah. And um, I think this year it was announced that for the first time we never imported corn into this country. We rather export it. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm saying all this to say, you know, trends are changing. Yeah, okay. We are selling our own plantain chips in these upscale uh, restaurants and um, mm-hmm. hotels. Yeah. Our own nuts, gun nuts, the ones, the local one we did do for Gramos. it, the one we did fry for the the anya inside. Yeah. Bro. The sun is right. Yeah, yeah. We 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 are selling them in these hotels yeah. um, as you know, small bites and, and stuff. Popcorn, our own maize and stuff like that. Wow. So we are changing the narrative. So at first, people would corn people will say that it's for kinky. And uh, you will just boil it and then they will sell it with kube on the side, yeah. on the roadside and stuff yeah. like that. But you see, things are changing. Mm-hmm. Uh, popcorn, you have to go to maybe if you are at Sutherland's Park, Children's Park, before you get popcorn at first. Oh, yeah, back in the day. Yeah. yeah, but now you see, you go to an upscale hotel and they are serving you popcorn. Yeah. So we are finding new uses for these things and we are using our own products. And that is, that is, that is the right way to go. And that is what I think City is trying to build on mm-hmm. and make sure... It's one thing to do it, but it's another thing to let the whole country buy into the yeah. idea. So these guys are these guys are pushing the narrative. Yes, and the, you you need a platform as big as City, as big as Joy, as big as in every other platform out there, as big as Views Podcast. God Ooh, damn it! God. <laughs> <laughs> we global, baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know to push this this agenda because we need it desperately. Need it. Yeah. We desperately need it. And and with that being said, why do we need it, bro? Yo. We need to balance the economy, man. You know what I'm saying? We we are now known as um, an economy which imports. Yeah. We import everything, even chewing. Uh, what? Toothpicks. Toothpicks. Toothpick. Matches. Ah. Yo. Everything uh. we import. Yeah. Um, now, the thing is, if we're in Africa and we have fertile land, we should start from what we know, what readily comes to us, and that's agriculture. 
But listen, let me let me let me ask you this very weird question. Mm. Do you have do you have a piece of land? Yeah. You've bought a piece of land, or yeah. you're thinking about buying a piece of land. Go on. What are you trying to do on it? To build a house? Hell yeah, I'm Ghanaian. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I'm trying to say? Like what I'm trying to say is, what I'm trying to say is, everyone is trying to buy a piece of land. Yeah, yeah. And but build. no one is trying to, you know, plant anything on that piece of land. Everyone is trying to build something. Yo, that's a very great point you make over there. But you see, I mean, we are we are even selling all the farmlands and using them for for real estate. Real estate. <laughs> yeah, and, yes, sir, man. I, yes, sir. I, this one I can't defend. Yes, sir. Because Ghana's Ghana's land is fertile. It is. Like I said, yo, the backyard. It did like nothing did it. Throw some few corn. Boom. I'm telling you, it's there. You know, but other places, you for war fertilizer and <laughs> KP two, K- one two three four five. <laughs> what did it got? Nitrogen, phosphorus, something, something. Potassium, <laughs> potassium, P- <laughs> MPK, MPK. You for war things before you know it for grow, but we we just get it here and we we are not even paying attention and yeah. we've we. we We've pushed this to the level where we import everything. And the importation is not doing any good to us, bro. No, it's not. It's not going doing anything good to us. Our balance of trade is, Charlie, way off. We are importing more than we export. Um, it's affecting our our currency because we need more dollar to import. You know Oprah did this thing? Oprah and uh, Michelle Obama. Yeah. They had this uh, initiative that we're doing. Which so one? Which is... Which is really the fat people want. No, no, growing your own food. I mean, yeah, Michelle Obama. That's where it started from. Yeah, but then yeah. the whole um, solution to it was really to grow your own food. What in America? Yeah, in the Boy. states. But, but I mean, she, so Michelle was actually doing it in the White House. Yeah, yeah. Oprah was doing it in her house. Of course, then niggas get land. Though. America, where they go plant for? <laughs> where? <laughs> what the house you are I Understand you? What they try to talk? So what I'm trying to say is. These are people from, you know, like who, who have high power, high influence, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But then they still see the reason why they should grow their own food. Yeah, yeah. And like you said, yeah, where they grow where they go grow for, for in the States. Because mm. like you said, they've changed they've used all their land. They haven't used all their land actually. They, but they've they, used most of it. Even nope. though they're still they're still growing their own food. That's they've used most of it to, you know, build estates and all that. But we've not got there on that on that scale. If anything, we are misusing our land more than them. I understand we, you. We we build horizontally, they build vertically. Yeah, but then the question is, you recently started growing corn behind your house. I know. And you've been living there for how long? I don't know. Exactly. What but I'm trying to say is if everyone because I know say you're low key, yeah. That if not for anything, at least we have four feet of land or just soil. Your house is plenty. Charlie, look. <laughs> at least four feet of land or soil anywhere around our house. Yeah. We can always plant something that we know we are going to use every day. Mm. No, it's, 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 it's true. And um, that is what we have to do. And if we don't do this, Charlie, eventually we go die. Because you go, you, you go to the market top, then they're selling tomatoes, a bag of a kilo of tomatoes for like what? You go markets before? Charlie, you make you not do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to make a point. <laughs> you go markets before. I'm making a point. <laughs> you go markets before. <laughs> yeah, come on, Charlie, say something. Our low key producer can't resist yeah, the conversation, she man. She gets the bottles where you bought. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go in. Um, so I think it's, hmm, I think it's about we consuming what we have mm. because in the past, after I think I don't know whether it was World War One or Two, oh, oh. Africa was basically feeding Europe. Okay. As I read. Okay. So we do have the stuff that we need, but then I think it's misplaced priorities. Could could it be? Have we lost our way? <laughs> Jay. It's a long time ago. What do you say? We we Africans were feeding Europeans. Yeah, after one of the wars, okay. we were actually exporting food. Mm. Right now, Nigeria has closed their borders. Yeah, forcing their people to eat local rice. We all yeah. know that Niger 
Nigeria. I swear, Nigeria. Is no, they be. But <laughs> yeah. still, they're still that kind of thing. It. But then they are still trying to force them to patronize their own stuff. Yeah. So I think it's misplaced priorities. Right now, somebody somewhere is planning on how to use Takade land to do real estate for somebody like Mayweather to come live there. Mm. When we know that that land is really fertile, we can do something with yeah. it. You, you see, um, I get what you mean. I mean, we could have planted coconuts and stuff like that yeah. and processed them for, you know, so many things. But yeah. um, I can't really knock somebody's hassle. You know, with that being said, we have a <laughs> podcast called Respect the Ghanaian yeah. Hustle. God yeah, damn exactly. it. <laughs> podcast. Check it out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shit. We, we, yeah. I mean, I can't knock somebody's hustle. So, yeah. Cheddar's, you know, interest or passion is in real estate. That's what he does. Exactly. Yes. Um, but, so, you can't knock his hustle if he wants to build, you know, that. But th the point is, um, Cheddar hasn't done anything here. The agencies that we have to regulate where people can exactly. can build real estate, where people can farm. So distinguish between mm. farmland and you know real estate land. If they are not doing his, their job, you can't really knock you know what Cheddar is trying That's to do because true. at the end of the day, Cheddar is also trying to sell Ghana, you know, to the foreign, you know, Thank you know, you. Or, or the West. And also with regards to the chips that was in packaged and all that. Mm. You see, as I said, the whole misplaced variety thing here, it really debates me because you, you like the packaging. Mm. When I walk into a shell shop or anywhere and I see the plantain chips, I'm like, yeah, yeah. this is really nice. Mm. With a regular Ghanaian, mm. with a regular Ghanaian, actually look at that packaging. I would buy it. I would patronize it. But Ghanaians will feel like, why, why are we trying to, you know the normal ones in the streets, you compare that to the packaged ones, and then they'll be like, okay, so what's the profit margin on this mm. and on the other one? Mm. Because they're like, it's well packaged, mm. extra money, mm -hmm. and then it becomes a problem. I feel like we should make our food, I support what CTFM is doing, yeah. we should make our food good enough for us mm. that I wouldn't even want to think of buying Yasmin rice or something. Yeah, and I, I think that's what we are trying to do, but yeah. at the end of the day, it boils down to us. Our we have lines. to deliberately, <laughs> deliberately decide that this is what we want as a people and support the initiative. If we don't, yo, they can make all the noise in the world and it will still come to an end at some point. That's that's the whole issue about this. Yeah. Um, I think so far, people are buying into the yeah. idea. You know, people are putting idea. pictures on, on Twitter showing what they are doing in their backyards. Uh, people, yeah. myself included, I'm getting Ghana rice from now till eternity. Okay, that's what I'm buying. That's what real I'm eating. Real corn. And you, you, you. I need, I need, I need, <laughs> I, need, I need to say this real quick. Yeah, I need to say this real quick. When we're younger, if we cook rice and we leave it in the pot, we can leave it there for a week. Nothing happens to the rice. It only becomes hard and fungus grow. That's it. That's it. Who now, that? now, when you cook rice and leave it for so two days, Charlie it turns into water. That's true. What the hell we did chop for this one design now, bruh? Yeah. What <laughs> we did chop? <laughs> we rice in the pot. I didn't tell you. No, Gamel, you, yeah, you and, can and attest to this. With respect to what you're saying, yeah. Yeah, sometimes I feel like we don't love nature as much as nature loves us. Uh. If you should go really into agri agriculture, I realize that, see, nature is doing so much for us. Nature is so powerful, feeding us with so many things. But we don't love nature because when, when you start growing your own stuff, when you start like planting your own fountain, like having your own farms and all that, you realize that we should actually love what nature is giving us. Yeah, yeah. And it boils up to this um, global warming thing and all that. I watched one, one, one TED talk about this small girl mm. actually crying about the fact that we don't care about nature. Oh, the, uh, <laughs> I forget that. It was UN, right? It was something about No, it UN. was actually a TED talk. That girl, that oh, girl. Okay. <laughs> See, you still go to America, you know, use engine, engine ship or boat or plane. You sail. No. Yeah, because she cares that much about the... Yeah, there are so many. <laughs> no, I, think, I 
I feel there are so many societal problems eh, yeah. that just this agricultural pitch mm. would just save us. It exactly. would help us. Exactly. You know when I sit in church or sometimes and there's no air, I'm like, where are the trees? Yo. They're building everywhere. You talk no, something. Like, I mean, what's happening? Yo. <laughs> you can't even breathe. Lately, um, because Ghana we turn abroad for them, they, 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 they are calling it heat wave on Twitter. Which can't heat wave? Oh, ah, wait. When? Also, no. What's your do? What's the heat wave? What's the heat wave? Yo, and, and where I live, yeah? Where I live, the fucked up thing is, um, when I moved in, you could you could see trees. Like, when I come out, you see trees down the road. It goes, you know, the road is there, yeah. and then trees all, the you know, by the side. Both sides. Trees, nice. Very nice. Now, no trees. The whole place looks like a like a concrete jungle. What's happened to them? They, then, then they cut them. And and you know the dumbest excuse they give to it. It's rubbish. Like it creates you know like well refuse or rubbish or whatever. And and my 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 question always is, who told you leaves? It's rubbish. Mm. Leaves. It's never been. It's never been rubbish. Which will fall on the bare ground, decompose and fertilize the land. Yeah. It's rubbish. How? So you rather yeah. cut it so that you have a fucking dry place. <laughs> hot. That's it. Hot. And I, 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 I don't get it. Like I see it always, and I'm, and I'm pissed off. But what can I do, man? Yeah. Maybe I, I can do more by actually walking to that guy and saying, hey, Charlie, Stop I will it. fuck you up. <laughs> 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 but I can't. Please don't. <laughs> but I, can, I can't do much. And it, it's, it's, it's a problem. We are doing, we, I think we are doing this deliberately to ourselves, to ourselves yeah. without knowing it. When people build, what they do is uh, they rather pave the whole place rather than growing vegetation yeah. and growing stuff just to cover the earth. Yeah. They'd rather pave it because that is nicer. Do you know what that does? That actually heats the yeah. air. Exactly. And it heats your the area around you. That means when it rains, n- nothing is absorbing the rain. That means it, you, you create a runoff. Mm-hmm. So it has to go somewhere. If your drains or your, your, your drainage system in the community is not proper. It goes straight to the street. And that means flood. Exactly. <laughs> Yo, man. It's a whole food chain. No, no it's, it's a chain reaction, and that chain, that yeah. same chain reaction is is what I'm looking at for this operation feed yourself. Yeah. If yeah. we do this and we do it right, mm-hmm. we are not going to just feed ourselves and eat nutritious food. We are going to create jobs because the bigger picture is to do this on a large scale. Yeah. Currently. We say we have unemployment of a different different percentage. Plenty. <laughs> Yo, but we are. This is going to solve half of the unemployment issues mm. in the country. Farming has never been the most attractive job when it comes to Ghana. Yeah, yeah. it's always looked down upon. When I was in SS, now they call it senior high. <laughs> when I was in SS, yo, we did tease our Greek boys. You know, we call them pigs, paduets. <laughs> 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 you know, we yeah. did tease them. Because what, we were doing business and stuff. So we did tease them because they always had to go to the, the school oh, farm yeah. and go. Yeah. We used to say they bath with the pigs. They, and they, <laughs> they actually used to do that. No, they didn't. But <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, like, they actually used to do that practical stuff, go to the farm. Yeah, we had a school farm. That's cool. Yeah, shout out no, to Okwapman yeah. Secondary School, man. Okwapman School. He got to be school. Yo. Excuse me. So, okay. <laughs> my, my 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 school was I think was big on a Greek, even though it's a business school. It was big on a Greek because mm-hmm. we had we had we had um, a pigry, we had um, a whole plantation for palm oil palm. Oh, yeah, really? a whole plantation. It's a hey, plantation. Hey, we call it a so plantation. Yeah, and and um, you know a few stuff, and and sometimes I can tell you for a fact when the oil palm come like when it's it's in season mm-hmm. we eat it in the dining hall oh okay yeah so that means that whole time we are not going to buy shit. yeah we just get everything from there they do it and then we eat it and i was feeding time. everyone in the school everybody in the school yeah. and it was nutritious My school you know i was actually getting thing. to a point there I was, yeah i was getting to a point 
I mean, yes, we live in we live in the city. Mm. But if you go to the village, the main occupation there yeah. is what farming. Yeah, which we look down upon. Exactly. But these people, if you see them, mm. the natural body they get. Nobody has been to the gym. You d- you don't have to take them to the hospital. But you know this guy is healthy as Yo. fuck. Yeah. But still, they live longer than we do. That's what I'm saying. They, Way they, longer they're than healthy. we do. And I told you I went to my hometown the other day. And before we got there, we called my auntie and said, Yo, Charlie, will they come down? Will they want something? But the answers. Yeah. When we got there, it was amazing. Everything was fresh. Of course. Everything was fresh. They could do me. Mm. The oil, maybe the kobe pear wasn't fresh, <laughs> but the body, the, 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 the cocoa yam, the mankini, everything was fresh and it was amazing. Like mm. that, that was one, yo man, if I'm not mistaken, I haven't had such a meal in a long yeah. time, man. You could feel it. I could feel it. And imagine having this on the daily. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine having this on the daily, everything fresh. There are all sort of sicknesses around What's that, we, <laughs> that we are complaining <laughs> about. It's all because of some of these foods that we eat. Genet- yeah. Now there's genetically modified foods yeah. on the market. Um, so many things. Things we are important. We don't know where they are from. Yeah. And we have all this land here and we are not doing anything about it. Or because of the bee status. Wait, and also the medicinal advantage of these plants are amazing. Medicinal, eh? Yes. No, because you know the funny thing is we we just say like take the palm fruits for example. Yeah, the oil palm. Yeah. It has a whole, you know, value chain when it comes to just this plant. Oh, I know the abibrio. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. So I understand where, where and, she's where and, she's and coming and from. And that's what I'm talking about with the employment. Because you see, it's not just about the the planting yeah. and harvesting. You see, we I think Africa here, eh, we've been blessed. Hundred percent. I say this all the time. Not not because of the land, not because of the resources. Fuck that. <laughs> I'm saying this because people have lived the life we want to live. Yeah. So literally there is a blueprint. Mm-hmm. All we need to do is to take the goddamn blueprint and follow it. That's so <laughs> yeah. and 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 the the the, the see the whole the amazing thing about it is we 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 get to, because of information mm. because of access to information yeah. we get to modify. Mm-hmm. You know, and personalize the blueprint yeah. to how we want we want to develop. Mm-hmm. It's no rocket science. No, it's not. We are blessed, not just being endowed with natural resources. I'm talking about the fact that people have done it. It's there. We know it's just there. You know, just like follow back, the in, thing. back in uh, GSS, mm. I say GSS because that was my time. <laughs> back in GSS, we learned about perennial crops, annual crops, biennial crops. Mm. But now there's nothing like that. Mm. You can grow these crops all every year round, single day, every single year, all year round. All the things we used to be taught in school, now it's real. So that's modifying the blueprint. It's real. We see it. It's happening. It's exactly. happening. You know, we we used to talk about irrigation at the time, and it was like uh, we are we are in space. We didn't oh. understand it. But now, if you're walking across somebody's property, there's um, people are irrigating yeah. their grass. What do they grow? What do they grow? Weed. Weed. <laughs> Weeds. You, you, you know, you know, son? Yeah. You know, <laughs> you, you know, exactly, water, you know? yeah. It's, it, and it's so amazing. It's like we are not really trying. or I'm using trying because like we don't want to see the benefit in growing all these things. And I think we do. We see. But you see, it's part of us now. Who we are as a people is we like Western stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and I think when we do on a scale of preference, when we do on a scale of preference, we prefer to eat Western stuff than to grow our economy. Mm. Growing our economy means, you know, unemployment being an issue, 
we can use agriculture to fix the unemployment issue. Yeah, 100%. If we start eating what we grow, that means less money will be taken out there to go and bring food stuff in. That means we are not going to demand for dollar that much. Yeah. So our currency can be more stable. Imagine all, imagine these uh, these uh, hotels, these restaurants. Mm. They get locally produced foods. Really cheap. That's what I'm talking Not about. Not just rubbish food, but very of very high That's what I'm talking about. And I think I have to put this in there before I forget. Yo. But the question is how many people they go buffet go chop for food? <laughs> like in oh, the people they chop. People they chop. <laughs> People Alisa, how many people they can chop? People they chop fufu. Uh, okay. I right. mean, Alisa, when people go there and then they see palm wine, mm-hmm. that's all they go for, bro. For real? Yeah. That's all they go for. And fufu. Trust me. You see, the taste is there. Yeah. We just have to package it right mm-hmm. and then we'll get the market. Alisa okay. is doing that and they are getting the market. Okay. Are you getting a point? That's, that's so it is there. But now I think we've seen the light. Yeah. We are packaging better than before mm-hmm. um people are now seeing reason to go into agriculture you know mm-hmm. not just for economic you know benefits yeah but also for nutritional benefits so we are looking at all that and you know unemployment it will kind of solve the unemployment issue, yeah. issue as well we are trying to make it more attractive. Mm-hmm. When it's attractive, that means when we have all these you know, kids. Really, when, when you say attractive, you need to really say profitable. Because... That's that's all I'm saying. Look, these kids get, getting out of school, yeah, exactly. they, are, they, they are all looking for money, bro. Yeah. And we haven't made it attractive because when we show the farmers on TV, mm-hmm. they are wearing tattered clothes and some fucking Wellington boots. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's changed. Now... Yeah. You, you know, mechanized. it looks, it's yes. mechanized. Yeah. Uh, and even if it's not mechanized, you, you know for a fact that, look, now people know that people will forever eat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There is a perpetual demand for food. food. 100%. If you say you want money, where else you won't go again? It's food. Go produce food because people go chop. Even people then they do alcohol. Not everybody drinks in, in this country or in this world. Yeah. But they are making what millions of dollars. But everyone eats. But everybody eats. Yeah. So even if beverage companies are making millions, imagine the food niggas. Mm-hmm. Yo, so kids, when you get out of school and we say go do farming, yo, you never joke. Go do that goddamn farming, man. Yeah, so far now for South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I said I, I, I want to mention this before I forget. Shit, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. It. Okay. So yeah, this year we've dubbed it Year of Return. Yeah, it's a good thing we have all these people coming to Ghana, coming to experience Ghana, coming to experience tradition, culture, the people, the food. You know, um, it's a big thing for Ghana and for Africa as a whole. Because yeah. when they come here, w- once they they like the place, that means they will probably go to other places other as well. So it's it's, yeah. it's a good thing. Now, I would want to dare. Okay or challenge every restaurant I will not, I won't say some every restaurant in Ghana yeah year of return they should throw their menus out yeah. and do because these guys these guys are coming to Ghana to experience Ghana not to come eat the shit they've been eating, they've been eating. all <laughs> this wow yeah. mac and cheese and that <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying yeah I'm daring or challenging people to go all restaurant out there to make sure their menus contain full Ghanaian food, like menu, ebune, ebune. everything, and make sure they use, it, and anyway. make sure they use Ghanaian food stuff. Yeah, it's a challenge I'm throwing to them because look, it's a fact. Nobody is trying to come from US and come and eat beggar. For where? The Buffet. Killy Willis. The beans, uh, the right, the right. bordier apems, uh-huh. the mankeni, the the potompoto, the garifoto, the wache, the wache, the wache, 
uh, rocks. King, King, King look, face the wall. I'm Charlie Abitier. Yeah, that was. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm, look, and this this is actually a challenge I'm throwing out there to all these restaurants and hotels and all these eateries out there. Look, these people are not from here. Year of return, they want to come and experience what they have in the experience because they were born in the diaspora, they have no idea yeah. who they are, they want to know who they are. Give them spicy look, don't feed them what they've been already eating, no. bro. <laughs> and a pizza, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Give them something pizza to eat, America. some something Ghanaian, something African, so that they can appreciate they, they can. They can understand what they've been losing. Something from the earth. You know what I'm saying? Straight from it. Yeah. That is, Views Podcast, our contribution to this operation, Feed Yourself. We are challenging every eatery out there, restaurant, hotel, to make sure everything that they feed these year of returnees. Oh, yeah. shit. I year like of that. Yeah, they like that. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> everything that they feed these guys should be Ghanaian. Yeah. It should be Ghanaian. It should be African. Because, I mean, we have other chefs in the country from other, Country, you know, yeah. African countries. Mm-hmm. It should be African. Yeah. So that when they go out there, they have to be talking about, you know, that one time they had kinky. Mm-hmm. That one time they had a bunu with snails. That one time they had goat. Or maybe that one time they had that South African dish that will make them actually go back to South Africa. You know what I'm saying? To try it from the land itself, exactly. Yeah, that's that's what I'm talking about. And that, that is what we need to do. Because this year of return thing is big. Yeah. It's not just people coming here. It's huge. It's bringing child money into the country, yeah. bruh. You know, foreign exchange into the country. These guys are, com- are coming with hard currency. and They're, they're going to spend and we have to make sure they develop a taste for Africa, yeah. for Ghana, before they leave. So that when they are there, they go like, oh, Charlie, <laughs> and then they come back. You see, yeah. there are a few things that you can use to change somebody, somebody's mind. Music, mm-hmm. food. We'll get into women later. But, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Music <laughs> and food. And yo, our music is our music is great. Already, Bernard Boy is doing a wonderful job, you know, yeah. promoting Africa to the world. Exactly. And um, we have to use the food, man. When they come, it's your return. Mm-hmm. Feed them some Ghanaian, African shit. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Now, saying Africa to the world, I think I have to give a shout out to this guy called Woody Maya. Woody Maya. Woody Maya. Woody Maya. I don't know if it's Woody Maya or Woody Maya or whatever, but it's Woody Maya. W O D E M A Y A. He's a YouTube guy. Uh, I was put on uh, by an over 60 year old woman. Okay. Yeah, apparently, it's my auntie. <laughs> <laughs> apparently. Yeah. And um, she's Jamaican or okay. something. I don't know. Yeah. And um, I was having a conversation with her, and uh, I think they told her I do podcasts and I do, a, you know, Ghana African stuff. And yeah. then she put me on Woody Maya. Nice. And the reason why she's been to Ghana three times is because of Woody Maya. Okay. So shout outs to that dude. Shout and out to Woody Maya. That guy goes African country from one African country to the other. Okay. And it's just telling the real African story. Nice. The real African story, the food, the people, you know, he's going there with his cameras, whether it's a phone or whatever, but he's telling the real African story, telling people, look, you thought Liberia is all about niggas dying. No, look, I'm eating jollof. (laughs) You know, something, you know, he's, 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 he's doing a wonderful job out there. I actually reached out to him. I haven't received, I haven't gotten any feedback yet. I'll check, I'll check him out. He's Ghanaian and I'm trying to get him on the podcast so we can talk about him and his journey and what he's trying to do. An amazing job that guy is doing. Big ups to you with the Maya. If you listen to this, I'll share it on his wall. So he listens to it. But yeah, and like I'm saying, this this guy is Ghanaian. Yeah. It wasn't a Ghanaian who put me on. I'm saying it's a woman from the United Kingdom yeah. who put me on to this guy. Bro, we global. Yeah, we global, nigga. We global. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yo, man, do you want to add anything? Um, not really, but then obviously, Matcon, Matcon, Matcon is coming to you in uh, December, December, Friday the 13th. Friday so, the 13th? Yeah. Yeah, Jason. Uh, what be that baby name? Chucky. Chucky. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so watch out Freddy for Kruger. Us. We'll be on events, right? So just watch out. So Matcon, uh, Laugh Drink Switch is the first speed dating event in GH. Mm. And Charlie, we are linking you up with. You know who, or we don't know who, but yeah, it's a year of return. You never know who you're going to meet there. So exactly, look out, look um, out, out. this time around is going to be quite big. Um, no Not jokes. Quite big. It's going to be very big. Yeah, but still low key because it's by privilege. Hundred percent. You know, yeah. say you do so, you will come. Nah, but nah, it not gonna happen. If I sign up, you know what I'm saying. If I scrutinize you, if I do background check and everything, you know what I'm yeah. saying. I we'll mean, find you. if if you want to meet somebody. And um, yeah, just just get on Eventbrite and check out our new our new ad. It's amazing. It's by by by, and our new ad was done for us by uh, B at Gray Area. B underscore Gray. B area. underscore Gray Area. Yes. On Instagram, B underscore Gray Area. Very talented guy. Yeah, he's even got a YouTube channel as well, so he's, you need yeah. to check him out. Yeah. So very talented guy. He does animation, he Animations does voiceovers. And voiceovers and all of those he's, things. He's a real deal, you guys. You guys need to check him Yo, out. Yo, if, if you want anything of that sort done for you, or even if you want to discuss concepts, that's a guy to call. Yeah. B underscore gray area. Go on Instagram, check him out. Go on YouTube, check him out. And yo, you'll be glad you did, bruh. You should see how an ad. It, it he's, big he's good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and also it's brought to you by the Praetorium, the Praetorium, the perfect venue for okay, for the perfect occasion. Charlie, what did they do? Everything, Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> yeah, so for all your events out there, um, weddings. Outdooring. Jeffrey's outdooring. Very soon. Yeah. Funerals. Funera- town hall meetings. Town hall meetings, everything parties, day. birthday parties, everything you can think of. Just just hit them on um, 0244926622. Um, and they'll hook you up, bro. Yeah, yeah. The Praetorium, the perfect venue for your perfect, perfect occasion. occasion. Yeah. Our producer, Loki Gamel, put your social media handles out there. People will follow you. Aye. It's Gamel underscore G H A R M E L L E. Oh, Yeah, but thanks for being being here today and helping us uh, with this podcast. Operation, Thank feed you. yourself. Feed your garden self. Nobody will feed you. That's all. That's all we're saying. That's all. Stop importing. Stop importing, man. Charlie, you can, you can be like Derek and grow wild cord <laughs> for your house to buy. <laughs> Yo, it was deliberate. <laughs> yeah, but... Yo, man, if you, if, if you listen to this podcast and you enjoyed it, good for you. If it didn't, good for you as well. Um, as... As we always say, and this time around, CTFM helped us. We are here to spark a thought or a conversation. Let the conversation keep going. Uh, the faster we do this, the better for all of us. Yeah. Charlie, we don't get CD, you guy. We need to invest that shit. <laughs> we don't get CD, but we can get dollar. Dollar no good give you, guy. Okay. No good <laughs> give me. Yeah, so um, let's, let's all jump on the bandwagon to operationally feed ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, and hopefully, you know, upscale it into something bigger and, and change this whole import economy narrative. Yeah. And try and reverse everything that we've been we've been, we've been doing to ourselves. It's it's not nice. True. It is not nice. I don't know how to say it. And yet and I, mean, f- I mean a perfect a perfect society or a perfect world for Ghana mm. will be will be a situation where even the homeless will will find some a whole meal to eat for one city. You know what I'm saying? So it will not be a perfect environment. Exactly. Us. Exactly. So let's, let's try and feed ourselves and then by doing that to reduce cost on so many things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And by you, you saying this, I think I'll add this. You know, when it's December, all sort of um, groups go out there and go and feed kids and shit. Fuck that. How about feeding kids on the streets or homeless people all year round, man? How about that? 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 Actually, Yo, man, eat your own food and we'll have enough to do this, yeah? Exactly. We'll have enough to do this. We don't have to spend extra cash going to look for somebody else's money, bro. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's do this. It's going to help all of us. 
and um we 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 are we are going to have a better workforce a healthier workforce yeah because we're all going to eat fresh we're all going to eat healthy and we're all going to have the strength you know to work for Ghana mother yeah mother Ghana exactly. <laughs> <laughs> work for same Ghana. Thing. same same <laughs> Ghana. work for mother Ghana and yeah. then, you know make this this Ghana a better place this for one, yeah. our kids next generation to come and yeah. for views podcast that's what we champion yeah we are trying to start a conversation which will in the immediate future or whatever you know to change, run, yeah. change to change, change whatever narrative it, there is for our future kids and generation this podcast has been very emotional because Charlie yo man it's not just short term this is a long term at some point we have to come to a realization that we need longevity we yeah. need to be here for a very long time and yeah. we have to take deliberate actions to keep us here exactly if we don't we'll be extinct hmm. if the dinosaur the dinos well dinosaurs right mm-hmm. if dinosaurs. they were ever here apparently them niggas didn't do that shit. So <laughs> 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 you know they didn't, they didn't feed themselves you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we, we 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 have to we have to do this this is very very dear to my heart it's very very important to me. This podcast is very very important to me. There are so many angles we can look at this from, but for time's sake, just keep we'll it just cut it. There. But you know for a fact, if you're out there, this is very important. Support the cause. Change your taste and preference. Buy Ghanaian. Spend your local money on local shit. Be racist with your money a bit, goddammit. Yeah, and grow wild corn behind your house. Not in buy the, your about. your fellow guy in tin. Ibop. Yeah, <laughs> be racist with your money. Why do you always want to buy foreign stuff? Doritos Keep the shit. money here, man. <laughs> Let's Especially stop depreciating six. our money and things. Let's buy plantain chips, not Doritos. How many people buy Doritos in Ghana? My sister. <laughs> 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 We, we, it's very very important this 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 is 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 very urgent it's it's so important that you have no idea yeah. is you see we have to close back i can't close but we have to close so important so important <laughs> so important so thank you thank you for listening to us uh, let's get interactive on social media at views podcast all platforms on youtube at views podcast gh or ghana on uh, on instagram podcast underscore views um on twitter at views podcast um facebook at views podcast everywhere at views podcast just get interactive with us um if if you want to get on the show or if you want to send us an email kindly yeah. send us to yo but we've got we've got a live event in uh, in december isn't it? yeah we ha- we've got a live event mm-hmm. as well yeah and do should we give the what the date no the the topic out not yet not yet. Not okay. Yet. Okay. Yeah. But it's going to be an amazing live event. Um, we we currently still scrutinizing the panel. Yeah. Yeah. Want we want the the best guys to be there. When we say the best guys, you're not talking about all the people you see. You. You're talking about real brains, technocrats. You Charlie. know, people who say shit and be like, mm. this guy did. Yeah. yeah that's what yeah. we're talking about. So people like just you and I, you know, regular people who are doing amazing things in their own corners, yeah. in their own industry. Those are the guys we are trying to put together to have a wonderful conversation. Mm-hmm. And um, you are invited. We'll give you, obviously, where we're going to do it, but you're invited to be there and come and share your views and listen. Let's have a big conversation about about ourselves and push Ghana forward in the right direction. Yeah, Thank you again for listening. Amazing. And... Um, Love you. Love you. Love you. That's it. We out. We out.